Hey guys, I'm back with a new video. In this video, we'll learn about event handling in React. So if you remember in the JavaScript playlist, we learn about events in great depth. We also discussed about events that can occur on HTML elements, both from theoretical and practical standpoint. Then we also learned about events that we can make use of on the window object, like DOM content, loaded, scroll, and more. Let us now see how we can handle events in React. Now in the previous video, we learn about use state in React. Let us understand about the second argument that we get from use state, which I told in the previous video is used to set the piece of state that we got from use state. So let us define the handler for setting the username. So as the second argument, I can say set username for setting the username and for setting the profession. Similarly, I can say set profession like this now let us first talk about the change event that occurs on input fields let us define two input fields one for username another one for profession now in the html world we have the on change handler as an attribute now here in jsx we have the same attribute but expressed in camel case notation so for the change event on the input field i can say input type as text and on change like this so if you are using say on click then on click should be in camel case notation because on and click are separate words so if you are connecting them you have to use this camel case notation the second words first character should be in uppercase so here we are using the on change attribute so on the username field we are defining this on change attribute and then using the curly braces here i will pass a handle username change function handle username change that i will define in just a minute so once the change event occurs on the input field this function called as the event handler will get triggered so let us define our handle username change handler and let's use a single line arrow function so let us go right here const handle username change and this arrow function will receive the event object and to set the username i can say event dot target dot value so to get the text that the user types in we are saying event dot target dot value so each time the change event occurs on the input field we are grabbing the value that the user typed in the input field and using this handler we are setting the username each time so here we are changing the text username which is initially set to alex but when the change event occurs on the input field and using this we are able to set the username to a different value. So let us go back to the browser to see if this works or not. So back in my browser, if I type something here, say the nerdy diff. So you can see that the change event got triggered on the input field. And whatever characters that you typed in the input field got reflected in our state. And here we are pulling it so from the state. So we are also rendering uh, the username in the UI as well. So using the input field, you are able to change this piece of state which is the username so you can type anything here say one two three and you can see the changes are reflected in the state of our component now let us do the same thing for the profession as well so let's add some attributes here placeholder enter the username and let us copy this down below change this to handle profession change and enter the profession so let us copy this handle username change and paste it down below and change. So let's use multi cursors and handle profession change. So let us switch back to our browser to see if it works or not. And let us type again in the username field. So the nerdy dev and say blockchain developer. Okay, so you can see this works as well. So you can see in the React Dev Tools, as soon as we typed characters in our input fields, the state of our input fields are being set to the new values that we type in each time. So remember that we only have to pass a reference to the function handle username change and handle profession change. So we are passing a reference to it and not invoke it like this. So we don't have to do that. We just have to pass the reference to our functions, which are handling these change events. Lastly, let us see how we can handle the click event on the button elements in React. So for that, let us define a button. And what I would like to do is, in this case is that whenever user clicks on the button, 
counter value gets incremented. So for that we need to define the state for counter that is its initial value and the handler that will change the counter value each time the button is clicked. So let us go right here. So const counter set counter and I will again use the use state hook set the initial value of counter as zero and let us define a button here. So button and increment counter now on the click of button so i can use the on click attribute and then use the curly braces let us pass a reference to the function that will handle the click event and on the click of the button we will increment the counter by one so handle increment of counter let us go right above and define this function handle increment of counter so here you can see we are passing a reference to this function that I will define in just a minute and on the click of the button we need to set our counter to its original value which is counter plus one like this. So let us go back to the browser and see this in action. So instead of this increment counter let us use a emoji here. Let us see what emoji we have for the thumbs up button. So thumbs up. Okay so this one let us copy this and let us paste it right here okay so this will not work we have to use the curly braces again and wrap this in a string like this so let us go back to the browser to see what we get so you can see that this button is being rendered to our browser let us also render the value of counter that we get each time so like this now carefully notice once I click on the button, the value of counter will get incremented by 1. So let us click on this. You can see we are getting 1. And in the state as well, we are getting 1. Let us again do this multiple times. And you can see the same is getting reflected in our state as well. So this was all I wanted to cover in this video. In the next video, we'll learn about a very important topic and that is props in React. I will show you how we can nest components within a component. And we will also see how parent and child components can talk to each other using something called as props. So let's catch up in the very next one.